and we've got some young men and, and we're praying that God would give them a heart to have a, a desire to see their fellow Marines living and follow, living for and following after Jesus Christ. Hey guys, Brian O'Day, Executive Director of the Praetorium Project, and the Praetorium Project is a family of multiplying churches in military communities worldwide. And speaking of worldwide, Thomas Hudson travels all over the D.C., Maryland metro area. He's joining us from Maryland outside of Washington, D.C., but he is one of the pastors of Pillar Church of Washington, D.C. How are you doing today, Thomas? Uh, I'm doing great, brother. Thank you for asking. God's been very kind and uh, just a, a beautiful day. I've been uh, northern, northwest Maryland. Northwest Maryland. All right. Uh, Thomas is one of our pastors, has a day job, works as an engineer in the greater D.C. area. Obviously, he traveled around a bit and um, also um, pastors the church. And so we're so thankful for you and, and how you um, dedicate that time. So, Thomas, why don't you give us a little bit of a kind of background on Pillar DC and your involvement in Pillar DC? Yeah, thank you for asking, Ron. Um, yeah, so my involvement at Pillar DC and a little history of our church uh, starts all the way back at the birth of Pillar DC, if you will, or the starting of the church. Uh, back in 2014, um, after finishing a residency at Pillar Dumfries uh, with Clint Clifton and Colby Garman, moved my family into D.C., uh, starting to gather with our core team uh, in the heart of Washington, D.C., just north of a little part of town called Chinatown, and quickly moved out east of the city and hill east uh, and gathered there for four years, from 2014 to almost 2018. And then uh, the Lord took us through a, a hard, difficult transition period. One of our other planting pastors uh, moved to another ministry. Um, and then, by God's grace, uh, allowed me to work with Clint Clifton very closely in church planting and actually replanting Pillar DC, bringing in uh, one of my beloved brothers, pastors, planters, Jared Huntley in 2019. And, and we replanted the church in 2019. Um, and then uh, God has continued to sustain us in that replant. We're about five years in, actually just celebrated five years in September, uh, which is amazing testimony to God's preservation of the work all the way through all that transition and replanting. Um, and now uh, God is uh, has us in a, a location. We have a building. Uh, that it is a blessing. Uh, there are difficulties that come with building, as many of you watching this probably know. Uh, so be careful, planter, if you're longing for a building. But uh, we've been, we, it's brought some stability to the life of our church. Uh, God has continued to sustain us. Uh, I share with one of my pastor friends in the city, we're paying the bills by God's grace. And so, um, yeah. Uh, and, and so now the church, we're around 70 members in our church. And God is doing great things at our church. So we're very grateful for Pillar Church in Washington, D.C. And uh, I'm celebrating uh, 10 years in ministry now uh, with the church. And so I've just been blessed to be a part of this church planning journey. Praise God. Man, that's so cool. I, I love doing these updates because, man, you just you just rattled through 10 years. <laughs> And I know, you know, I was watching all of that from not too far away and mm -hmm. uh, just all all of that for the past 10 years. And uh, just lamenting, I know um, Sean was a good friend of yours and, yes, uh, yes. and Clint coming in and uh, driving an hour to be a part of uh, seeing what's next. And then Jared and his family moving from Canada, mm -hmm. all those things. So just yeah. uh, praise God, 70 members in Washington, D.C., not the easiest place to plant a church by any stretch, and trying to reach military in D.C. D.C. is a highly transient city anyway, yeah. and then you add focusing on the military. Additionally, it adds even more transientness, and so, man, that's praise God. Man, there's something to celebrate right there. My second question is, what are you celebrating these days? Yeah. That's one of them. What else are you guys celebrating? <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, celebrating, uh, 
uh, one of the big things that we have been praying about um, was that God would give us return to us a, a, a foothold, if you will, at Joint Base, Joint Base Anacostia Bowl. We call it JBAB here in the District of Columbia. Uh, primarily Air Force, Navy. There's some Marine guys there. Uh, Washington White House Communications Agency there. A lot of stuff happens at JBAB, but. We had a very strategic family that was there, opening up their home, uh, hosting small group on, on uh, base, uh, very welcoming to more other families, Marines in particular, there's a Marine barracks there at JBAB as well. And uh, that that foothold went away as that as that elder of ours transitioned back to after retiring from the Coast Guard and uh, back home. And so we just prayed. We said, God, we want to have influence at JBAB. Please allow that to happen. And by his grace, over the past uh, six to eight months, he's given us several families from JBAB. And those families have all been blessings because they come with kids that we can serve and love on. Uh, they come with parents who are willing and ready to serve in the church and love in the church. And they also are disciple makers. They work with a uh, parachurch ministry to, to make disciples in, mil in military community themselves. And so it's just been a true blessing to get to know those families and then bring them into the membership of the church. And uh, that has blessed and brought some life and encouragement to our body. Uh, and again, seeing the Lord answer that prayer. Another thing is... Uh, We've uh, seen uh, a slow trickle of young Marines uh, come and visit us uh, over the past uh, few months. Uh, we, we've we had that, that that fluctuated over the years from uh, Marine Barracks, Washington. Uh, but in particular, uh, God has been drawing one young man. Uh, he's probably going to go through our membership process and uh, become a member here soon. Another young man is you know, honestly, just lost and needs Christ. And he keeps coming and he always says, I don't know why I'm here. And uh, so just being able to minister to people who need to hear about the life-saving gospel of Christ uh, is, is a blessing. And then um, we're slowly having some traction within our neighborhood. Uh, we long to see our neighborhood impacted by the life and the ministry of our church. Yes, we want to military, uh, minister to military communities. We have a, a huge community right around us that is lost, um, abused, um, and in and, and all honesty, probably living under a lot of fear, especially with the looming election season coming in our nation, uh, where we're going to lose some of those neighbors, and they're going to move to new jobs, and we're going to gain some neighbors, but we want to have an impact there, and we're beginning to see some influence among our neighbors through outreaches, uh, through a constant presence in the neighborhood. And so those are some of the blessings and, and things that we're celebrating at Pillow Church of Washington, D.C. Um, and, uh, yeah, God continues to do uh, probably a million other things in our midst, and we're just unaware of them. But those are some of the blessings that are very distinctly aware of. Yeah. Praise God. That's awesome. Yeah, that's exciting to hear about. Uh, a, a new foothold on JBAB. Um, I know, man, it was just... Uh, great ministry there. And then when that family moves away and, you know, retires and goes, moves back home, you know, like, man, how do we keep this ministry going, which is just a normal uh, challenge for yeah. all of us. And then, yeah, reaching the young, um, the youngest of our ranks is, uh, is a real challenge. I, I always say they come in packs and they leave in packs, generally speaking. <laughs> uh, so it's exciting that you're seeing, seeing that happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, how can we pray for you? And and one I'll kind of say in there is pretty cool. Like you got you're in Washington D.C. Like people who live yep. near you, some are congressional staffers or work at the White House or whatever the case is. Yeah. And so you guys, the election cycle for those of us who live away from all of that, it's you know, we cast an informed vote. We do what we can and we do our part, and then we kind of go about our lives. But for yeah. you, to like it's the whole city kind of changes over and new people move out and move in mm -hmm. the next mm -hmm. three months. And so, yeah, just uh, what can we be praying for that being that being one of them? Yeah. Um, in, in all honesty, uh, that does impact our city, especially with the transition of neighbors um, and, and losing people. Uh, 
uh, who were a part of administrations um, for long periods of time, and then they, they may have to move away because someone else is going to be put into their slot. That's hard. It's always hard to lose neighbors. Uh, and so um, just to be praying specifically for our church and our city that in that transition, we continue to have influence. We continue to have an impact in getting to know our neighbors. Uh, but then that uh, that God would just uh, continue to grow his church in the midst of that big transition and shuffle. Um, uh, one, uh, another area that I would love for you guys to be joining us in prayer about is um, we are seeking to impact our neighborhood, not just by presence, but actually serving um, uh, people who have intense uh, spiritual and physical needs. Uh, and there's a community about four blocks away from our building called Potomac Gardens. Um, and we we were able to collect some school supplies for them, partner with another uh, organization to get those backpacks to needy families. Uh, but there are other intense uh, physical and spiritual needs there. Uh, there's a there's a foothold of Muslim Brotherhood and um uh, even just people who are Muslim that live there, um, there's a spiritual darkness. There's lots of physical problems, um, health, mental health, and just even housing and, and like the conditions in which people live. And, and I'm begging God, and, and our, our some of the men of our church and members of our church are begging God to give us a clear direction on how to impact that community so we can meet the physical and spiritual needs of that community. Uh, in ways that haven't been met uh, by um, our local governments or by other organizations. And so just please join us in prayer for direction and, 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 and particular ways in which we can come alongside that community and, and serve them and love them and share the hope of Christ with them in the midst of probably difficulties that many of us, especially the people that live directly around us, will never or probably rarely experience in our lives. Mm -hmm. um, and additionally, um, please uh, pray for um, influence with Marine Barrett's Washington. Uh, pray that the young men that are coming would be bold in evangelism and be basically missionaries at the very. Um, we've had men who God has raised up that live there or serve there that have acted like missionaries there. Um, and we've got some young men and, and we're praying that God would give them a heart to have a, a desire to see their fellow Marines living and follow, living for and following after Jesus Christ. Um, so, so pray that those Marines would catch the vision uh, that they can be missionaries among other Marines who would take the gospel there. We got a young man uh, in the Air Force leading a Bible. No, he's. I'm sorry. He, yeah, he's in the Air Force, but he's leading a Bible study among some Marines there. He gets on base and leads a, a Bible study. Uh, recent member of our church, um, and and then we know that there's just spiritual darkness and loneliness and well, honestly, depravity going on in those barracks. And so, just pray that God would save those young men and women that, that are serving there. Marine Barracks, Washington. Um, and then um, we'd ask uh, for uh, your pers persevering prayers in asking God to allow for evangelistic fruit to occur in our neighborhood. We go out every third Sunday for gospel and grub. We do, we do street evangelism is what a lot of people like to call it. We go out, we pray for people, we share the gospel with people seeking to be a church that's known for uh, our regular sharing the good news of Jesus Christ, that he brings salvation and forgiveness to sins and welcome sinners into the kingdom through repentance and belief. And so uh, pray, pray, pray that uh, we would see fruit and we would be able to baptize uh, five new individuals over the next uh, year uh, at Pillar DC, we would love to see the baptismal water stirred because of your fervent prayers to pray for evangelistic fruit at Pillar DC. Hmm. Praise God. Thank you so much for those. Um, man, I'm going to add one as well. Uh, you said you're joining me in, from a Starbucks. And so, uh, 
you know, somebody just heard you rattle all those off and just your passion for the gospel and that Christ would be made known. And I know you're very far away from your church building, but uh, I even pray that maybe there'll be a follow on conversation for somebody that's eavesdropping for you right now. Um, but for those of you who are listening, I encourage you uh, at the end of this video, or if you're listening on Spotify, just uh, stop this before you move on with the rest of your day. Take some time to pray for Thomas Hudson. Take some time to pray for Pillar DC. Take some time to pray for that evangelistic fervor in their neighborhood. Uh, Joint Base Anacostia Bowling, uh, Marine Barracks, 8th and I. Uh, among the Muslim community, growing Muslim community in um, uh, in D.C., and for those who are transitioning in and out of the city uh, around this election season over the next three months or so. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you for your ongoing support and partnership. Thank you, Thomas, for joining us. Thank you so much, Brian. I appreciate your support and encouragement, brother, and uh, it's always a pleasure to catch up with you and and uh, chat with me about what the war is up to in Amen.